Now watch, I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to put for this exact vehicle. I can put two years plus or minus back, but I'm going to use exact vehicle. Okay, so it says OBD2 code list, catalyst efficiency. And this, this is a huge problem, catalyst efficiency, isn't it? Normal. Okay, so this 420, we can see what it is. And look at this. It tells us all the neat information that we need to know. Possible causes of a 420. Air leak in the exhaust manifold or exhaust pipes. Catalytic converted damage or has failed. By the way, don't forget to do some cleaning. Use something like Chevron Tecron or Runright will help clean it up. And it's not one cleaning that's going to fix it. You need multiple ones. You should also advise your customers to use good quality fuel. That is true. Front uh, O2 sensor older age than the rear one. And by the way, a lot of times you will get an O2 sensor problem front or rear. Don't just change them, test them. Make sure that sensor can go from nice low voltage up to high voltage, or the PCM has failed. By the way, guys, this should be the last thing that you ever, ever replace. You need to test, not guess. Test and it then to it death tells before you, you condemn it. Yes, test before you condemn it. Engine speed, make sure you race it up in closed loop with the throttle over 20 miles an hour, and then it's telling you to look at the map voltage. It's telling you what to do, and it says this sets in two trips. How about using mode six here? If you use mode six, you can see how close it is to failing. And a lot of times, believe me, if you make sure that you got good spark plugs in the car, good fuel injectors, you know, the wires, the coils, all that stuff is in good shape, and you've done some good cleaning. And again, it's not one time you clean it. There's no miracle stuff out there. Tecron is phenomenal stuff, but guess what? It ain't gonna do it in one shot when the vehicle has a hundred and something thousand on it. This vehicle, I've done this from when it's new, about every 30,000 miles. This thing runs like a clock, okay? Reason being, if you maintain something, it's gonna run good. Let's ask for some questions, Craig. Are TIDs and CIDs the same from OEM to OEM like DTCs, or, or can they be different? They are different, they're, oh. often, they're all over the place. They can be very different. They're super different. They're not only different from manufacturer to manufacturer. Same manufacturer, different the car. Same manufacturer. Maybe the same car, different engine. model year or whatever. Yeah, or right. Options. Or sometimes options. Make sure you look it up. You know, get a cup of coffee, pay your money. Again, go to www.nastf.org, find the Toyota or GM, or if you're lucky, Hyundai for free. But most of them charge you about twenty day, uh, twenty dollars for twenty four hour access. Some will give you forty eight hours. Whatever it is, go there, download this information, and again, it's yours to keep on your computer, not to share with anyone. And OEM information is nothing better. Sometimes there's people out there to tell you they'll sell you a decoder book. That's a bunch of bull. Use the correct information so you're not chasing your tail fixing a problem that maybe was for a different engine size That's or right. been updated or, by the OEs. Or a different year or something, they didn't update their data. So let's look at direct hit now. Um, one more question, um, and people are antsy for mode six. Well, we have a whole free mode six thing, www.pten.com, and one live on a vehicle at uh, www.tstseminars.org. Um, if we use a cleaner like Tecron, uh, it will fix the converter? No, well, <laughs> well let me, rarely. Well, let me tell you this. If the converter has been damaged, if the substream has been cracked or broken due to a issue, um, misfire, misfire or whatever, whatever, it's done. It's done. But in many, many cases, like Toyota is notorious for a 420. A 420 on a Toyota is something that I have had personal experience with where I could clean it up providing I've taken care of the engine misfire that caused the 420 to get there. Or the oil consumption. Or problem. the oil consumption or the O2 sensor, the dirty air filter. Guess what? Or the bad injector causing a misfire. 
These are things that, yes, Tecron can help. Run right Tecron, same exact stuff. It can fix it. Now, mind you, it's not instantaneous. No. Um, generally, what happens is you, you do these cleanings and you clean up some of it and exposes some of the uh, catalytic converter substrate. And then as the vehicle is driven over hundreds or even a few thousand miles, it'll burn away those deposits and the catalytic converter will become more efficient. If somebody comes in and fails inspection now and needs to pass right now, it's, yeah, it's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, by the way, it usually from experience where we had a uh, 420 on a few Toyota Camrys, uh, again, pretty common on that car, it probably took about six tank folds before it came back. Many of them came back to reading almost a perfect score in mode six, which is zero. Zero is real good, one is no good, but some cars are less than one. Again, you can check our website and you'll find more information. Okay, so let's look at something here. Let's look at the, uh, let's look at the emission control system. Oh, let me go back. Let's say you had a problem with emission controls for this exact vehicle. Now, repair tracks. Here's an information bulletin. Look at the information it gives you right here. It tells you the motor size, 2437, and it's giving you the information here that you could have an oxygen sensor equipped vehicle, and it's gonna tell you what to do with the test and effects. This is kind of a setup uh, bunch of information. It's telling you how the system operates so you will understand it and be able to diagnose it properly. Now let's look at something else. Let's look at, whoop, that was one of four. Let's look at hotline. Now here goes one where this Jeep in powertrain control module had, it looks like a natural vacuum leak assembly problem, and it goes through all of the tests and fixes, and it tells you who the call was taken by from our buddies out of Denefix, Jeff Sweet and my buddy Bill Sauer. Uh, great stuff here, only the SPX OTC Pegasus has it. No one else has this. By the way, if you want to blow it up, you're blind, and I can move it up or down, okay? You know, for old blind guys like me and that Ed Lipscomb guy out there, and we need to blow it up, and Pierre, forget about you. It's all over for you. You're older than me, for Christ's sake. Okay, let's go back here, and uh, let's look at something else. Let's look at national recalls, and let's say you had equipment labels. We'll just pick that one. So it gives you other information right here on labels and so on. Let's go back and let's look at TSPs. Again, super, super important for TSPs. Let's look at this one here, positive crankcase ventilation. And a lot of people forget to change the PCBs on this. And a lot of manufacturers have this problem in colder climates or cold weather. They have, a lot of them have updated kits for, to fix yes. this stuff. And by the way, you're getting some sludge in that oil? Check that PCV, positive crankcase ventilation, okay? Now look, it's a regular Chrysler bulletin, and by the way, I can move this around any way I want, okay? I could blow it up. So there's some great information here. You could also print it out for your customer, and that's one way to make money, always print it out. Wiring groups, let's look at the engine. Fuel control, wiring diagrams. Let's look at this wiring diagram here. I can move it. I can move it over. I can move it up. We can see information on it. We can go back. We can look at the other wiring diagram. By the way, wiring diagrams are super important. A wire diagram is basically the map of the vehicle. You would not drive from here to Minnesota headquarters for OTC SPX without a map or GPS, which has course, a map in it. <laughs> of course, if you use a GPS, make sure you use some common sense, not like some bozo that uh, went on a railroad track because they told them to make a right. But guess what? Use some common sense when using it and you'll find your way. Same with wire diagrams. Know where to start, follow it through, and take it from there. Let's look at a couple of more things. Okay, let's get out of wire diagrams and Let's look at component location. 